question is that the bill be now read a second time. Ms. Rahayu Mazan. Mr. Speaker, the Children and Young Persons Act, CYPA, which was last amended in 2011, provides for the welfare, care, protection and rehabilitation of children <coughs> under 16. It also supports children who have committed offences, those who have been abused or neglected by their parents or caregivers, and those whose parents are seeking the court's guidance because of their children's behaviour. The importance of this act cannot be understated. Children who go through traumatic experience or have challenges when they are young are more likely to have issues when they are older. A research done by Erasmus Byrne, Barbara Rubin and Seth Polak in 2017 explained that individuals who have experienced chronic and high levels of stress during their childhoods are at increased risk for a wide range of behavioural problems. Yet the neurobiological mechanisms underlying this association are poorly understood. Mm. They measured the life circumstances of a community mm. sample of school-aged children and then followed these children for a decade and found that those who had experienced extreme stress as children were hampered in their ability to make good decisions as adults. Simply put, childhood trauma due to circumstances like neglect or exposure to violence created young adults fundamentally unable to correctly consider risk and make healthy life decisions. In fact, no threat of punishment was likely to be effective in changing this deficit. Chief Justice Sundresh Menon, in his keynote address at the conference on at-risk youth in 2015, aptly said, In general, it can be said that the more a child is exposed to adverse circumstances <coughs> at an early age, the more disadvantaged will that child be. Indeed, it has been suggested that the strongest predictors of whether a child will eventually turn to crime are likely to be in such things as poor parental supervision, parental conflict, disrupted families, and most notably having parents with a criminal or antisocial background. It is therefore a matter of some importance that we keep an eye on the state of our families. Mr. Speaker in Malay, please. Banyak kajian yang menunjukkan bahawa sekiranya anak-anak melalui pengalaman yang buruk atau cabaran semasa kecil, kesan terhadap kehidupan mereka amat mendalam. Salah satu kajian yang dilakukan pada tahun 2017 menyatakan bahawa trauma semasa zaman kanak-kanak mungkin kerana anak itu diabaikan atau terdedah kepada keganasan akan membentuk belia dan orang dewasa yang tidak mampu menilai risiko dan membuat keputusan yang sihat dan betul dalam kehidupan. Jelas sekali pengalaman yang buruk akan menjejas trajektori atau hala tuju kehidupan seseorang kanak-kanak atau belia itu. Maka itu, akta CYPA ini amat penting sebagai rangka perundangan yang memelihara anak-anak dan orang muda daripada bahaya dan membantu pemulihan jika perlu secepat mungkin. Sebagai satu masyarakat, kita juga perlu terus menyokong dan membimbing ibu bapa, terutama sekali mereka yang punya cabaran kerana mungkin mereka sendiri menghadapi trauma atau pengalaman yang buruk semasa kecil. Mungkin sokongan dan bantuan kepada ibu bapa yang punya masalah dengan anak-anak mereka perlu dipertingkatkan agar mereka dapat faham proses yang sedang mereka lalui dan diperkasa dengan kemahiran untuk mendidik anak-anak mereka. Sejauh mungkin, kita mahukan keluarga itu bersatu dan hidup dalam rukun dan damai. Tetapi yang paling penting adalah untuk melindungi anak-anak daripada keadaan yang berbahaya atau memudaratkan. So speak in English. Childhood and youth are points in life when one is supposed to be the most carefree and protected. However, this experience may not be true for some children or young people. We need to help those undergoing challenging periods as much as we can. The underlying principle of any regulation in this respect must be that the welfare and best interests of the children and young person will be the paramount consideration. I appreciate that the work done by all the officers and caregivers in this sector is not easy. I therefore acknowledge the need to review and make amendments to this act over time. I support the amendments but have a few matters which I wish to seek a clarification on. Firstly. I would like to welcome the move to extend the protection under the Act to all children and youth below the age of 18 up from the age of 16 today. Those who are under 18 are still young, generally less mature cognitively and are still therefore vulnerable to abuse and neglect. They should also be given the necessary attention and appropriate rehabilitative support when they offend. The amendments to extend the Act to include children who are abused or neglected and young offenders aged 16 to below 18, it is therefore a good move. 
However, I would like to echo the concerns of some stakeholders about the implications of having to oversee and rehabilitate a wide range of children and young people. In particular, when we deal with young offenders, a wider age range of young people may be placed within the same residential facility. The needs and risks of a small child and a physically larger youth would differ and present different challenges. I've already received some anecdotal feedback about the instances of bullying in some of the residential homes. Typically it happens when one resident or a group of them feel that they have more control or power over another. Will this problem be aggravated when there is a wider age group of residents with older youth? Further, will it be more difficult to coordinate targeted programs or support for rehabilitation when you have a wider age group in the residential homes? In addition, what is the Ministry's assessment of the capability of the sector to carry out the necessary functions to manage a higher number of children and young people? The increase of the age limit will not only increase the numbers, but as alluded to above, the different groups of young people will have a new profile with differing needs and risks. What is the plan to strengthen the ability of the Ministry and the social service agencies mm -hmm. to operationalise the amendments? Lastly, I would like to seek a clarification on the proposed amendment to include the new section 68A, which enables the person in charge of any home for children and young persons that is operated by or under the management or control of the government to use or authorise any person who is assisting the person in charge to use mechanical restraint on a person detained in the home. I'm little bothered by the possible scenarios and impact such action would have on the children or young persons restrained. Such circumstances could add to the trauma faced by the children and such actions seem antithesis to the spirit of rehabilitation. I note and appreciate that this power mm. is only sanctioned in very specific circumstances and in practice may be necessary. I note my, that Minister had earlier explained the need to ensure safety of the social workers as well as the residents, other residents who are in the group home. However, I would like to understand the specific con considerations that led to the decision to have this provision and how we reconcile it with the spirit of rehabilitation. In particular, I would also like to know what standard operating procedures are in place to guide the use of this power and what processes and checks are in place to prevent the abuse of this provision. I feel that it is important for the Ministry to constantly assess the use of this provision <coughs> and its impact on the children and young people. Mr. Speaker, the CYPA provides an important framework to ensure protection of our children and young persons from harm and the provision of support and rehabilitation when they go astray. There is a need to review and strengthen the Act <coughs> so that we can best address the needs of the sector and the community. Therefore, notwithstanding the comments I made earlier, I stand in support of the Bill.